This podcast is about introducing our fans to the animals, plants, and other products that we work with at Josh's Frogs. It's an opportunity to paint a picture of our hobby that is refreshing. We want you guys to be successful with the animals that you're keeping, and we want our hobby to grow ethically and sustainably into the future. Welcome to the Josh's Frogs podcast. Uh, today I have Lori back again to talk about gargoyle geckos. Uh, before we do that, I want to let you know that the Josh's Frogs podcast is brought to you by joshesfrogs.com, where your one stop shop for all your reptile, amphibian, and pet insect needs. Uh, we only sell captive bred animals, um, and then we carry everything you need to take care of those uh, animals. So we do all the live feeders, we do all the live plants and all the dry goods you need to take care of them, from caging, lighting, heating, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we do all that. Uh, we offer a 72-hour, three-day live arrival guarantee on any insects. If there's any problems, just let us know, and we'll replace them. And then uh, we have customer service agents available anytime you have any questions or anything like that. And then we have tons of blogs and articles and how-to guides um, and videos that uh, kind of educate us on all on how to best keep those animals. So check us out, joshusfrogs.com. And without further ado, welcome back, Lori, to talk about gargoyle geckos. Gargoyle geckos, yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> Tell us a little bit. Remind us, what do you do here at Josh's Frogs? What kind of animals are you working with and uh, how long have you been doing it? For sure. Um, I'm Lori Parker. I've been here nearly three years now. Wow. At the end of this month will be officially three years. Wow, that's awesome. Which is awesome. Uh, fun fact, it's my longest job ever and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> A little embarrassed to say so, but. <laughs> that's so cool. That's so oh, yeah. cool. Um, but yeah, I am a reptile keeper. Specifically, I work with the New Caledonian species, which is gargoyle geckos, which is what we're talking about today. Uh, crested geckos, chihua, chameleon geckos, all kinds of fun little things. Cool. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Tell us a little bit about what's it like uh, working here. Like, what are some of the tasks that you do on a regular basis? Um, how, how do you take care of the animals? As best I can. <laughs> <laughs> um well, first thing I do when I punch in, I get myself some coffee, I have a snack, <laughs> and then <laughs> I make my way over to my department, and I open up my computer. We follow these awesome little task things called Asana. It helps keep us organized. Um, I see what I have to do for the day, and then I usually go into daycare, which is where we keep all of our babies. Mm -hmm. um, I look for babies that have hatched, and I weigh them and write out their birth certificates and whatnot that's cool yeah uh, make sure they're all healthy weight um and then also take care of shipping so if there's animals going out to be shipped i usually take care of the new caledonian stuff or i cover for people who aren't here yep and also uh then i go and check my care tasks for my breeders in my room which usually is i always clean first so i usually scraping the glass yep. getting it all nice and clean because they're little artists they like to poop all <laughs> over the glass that's just what new cows do <laughs> and then i mist and feed and do an overall wellness check make sure they're doing good cool um tell us a little bit about gargoyle geckos what what is a garg and just give us a lowdown on what they are for sure. So I have some with me today that I brought. I will start with my breeder, Garg. He's one of my favorite males. He's not super fired up right now. He's kind of orangey, kind of pink. But when he is fired up, uh, he's this bright, like, brick red color. And he's got these really awesome, like, black almost chain link yeah. looking stripes on his sides. He's very well tempered. I love handling this guard because he's such a sweetheart. I'll get him out for a second so you guys can actually see him in person. And he I wants to get out. He is. Yeah. He's very cool. A lot like Krusty's. Um, they're pretty mellow. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people like them. And they are very similar care to Krusty's. They're also found on New Caledonia. So they share the islands. Are you licking me? Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, and fun fact, these guys are called gargoyles because they have these little knobby notches on the tops of their heads, which is kind of cool. Oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah. And they just kind of, during the daytime, like nap and snooze, and they look kind of like gargoyles just chilling, you know? Um, 
Their tails are semi-prehensile, so sometimes they can grab onto you with that tail. They also, yeah, there you go. You can see him grabbing my finger. Hi, buddy. He just wants to explore. Now, crested geckos tend to be much more common, so kind of compare mm -hmm. and contrast the two. Like, wh what's, what's different about them physically and then, yeah. like, how they behave? So, these guys are more nocturnal. You're going to see them more um, active at night. Um, they can be a little grumpy sometimes, mm. but it, it kind of depends on the individual. Um, they do have some teeth on them. It does not feel nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're a pretty larger bodied animal. They're kind of slower moving. Um, pretty mellow, honestly, yeah. from my experience keeping and breeding them. Um, they eat a very similar diet. Yep. A lot of people will feed them rapashi or pangea. Um, I usually feed ours rapashi once a week, and then they also get insects once a week. Um, they do like having a little bit more insect protein. Their teeth is really good for that. All right, so you had mentioned a prehensile tail. Yes. Can you give us a lowdown? What is that? Because I can tell like it's a little bit different than crested geckos. I can, yes. I can see that. Talk a little bit about what that means and, and how they use it. So just like their toes, they have these sticky little hairs. Um, they also have it on the very tip of their tail as well. And while they're climbing and jumping, they'll use that to grab onto things. So you can see him yep. doing that to me right now. Kind of like a extra limb, you know, to help them maneuver through like branches and trees That's cool. or even their owner's hands like yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> um, they do have the ability to regrow their tails too, unlike Cresteds. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing that's kind of cool about them. Yep. And they do have quite a variety of morphs, too. I think crested geckos have more morphs. Yep. Gargs don't have nearly as many, but they are really, really awesome animals. They do have some pretty cool colors and um, patterns. This guy, I would say he's like a red base. Um, you can see he's got a little bit of blotching on him when he's yep. fired down. But like I said, he's. I wish he was more fired up. That's when, you know, depending on temperature or humidity yeah. or stress even, they can get brighter or darker. That's what's called firing up or yep. firing down. So, yep. Yeah. And like I said, they got these little knobs on the top of their head. They're just kind of like a little bony uh, protrusion that literally makes them look like a little gargoyle. That's where they get their name. That's cool. So now you talked a little about uh, about them being more arboreal than crested geckos. D would you notice that in captivity? Are are they climbing much more than crested geckos? Are they a little bit different in that regard? They tend to prefer to hang out on the branches more so than the glass. They are like a heavier bodied animal. Um, I've noticed that our breeders here tend to really prefer you know hanging out on branches and in plants more so than just hanging out on the glass like cresteds do. Yeah. Um, especially after misting, I noticed they have a little bit harder time like clinging to the glass. So mm -hmm. one of the best things you can do for your garg is just clutter that enclosure with as many branches and plants as you can. They love that. They don't cool. really, like I said, hang out on the glass. <laughs> yeah. Now talk a little bit about cage size. So yeah. for, for a guy that large, how big are you? Um, putting in, uh, how big of a cage are you using? And then talk mm -hmm. us a little bit about how you design it and how you set up. What are the yeah, things that are sure. part of it? So for one this size, he's about three years old now. Um, I would say minimum in 18, 18, 24. But honestly, in 18, 18, 36 would be better. Because mm -hmm. they, like I said before, they are a larger animal yeah. than Cresteds. Um, they also are a little territorial, so I wouldn't recommend keeping more than one together, especially don't put males together. They will rip each other to shreds. Gotcha. Male and females can get along, uh, but I wouldn't recommend unless you know you know what you're doing and you're yeah. a breeder. Yeah. Females can also be put together, but again, with caution because things can happen. They are a little more territorial than Cresteds. Yep. And they really don't like each other sometimes. I get that. Mm. <laughs> I don't like people in my space either, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, honestly, well, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> you talked about branches and you talked about yeah. plants. Any any specific mm -hmm. ones that you kind of lean towards when it comes to plants or, or types of uh, branches and, and their oh, enclosures? Yeah. What, do you, what do you like to put in there? 
I actually really like our cork branches that we get. Gotcha. Um, they're really thick and sturdy. Um, you can prop them up really mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Even like, you know, you might need a saw to cut them because they're, they're pretty hard to break. Yeah. Yep. But these guys love them a lot. Like, I prefer the branches for them more than the cork flats. Gotcha. Um, and then as far as plants, Pothos is yep. good old reliable. Yep. yep. It can tolerate a beaten, especially from these guys, because they're, like I said, a pretty heavy bodied animal. And, yep. you know, you don't want to put dainty little ferns in there. They won't yep. make it. Um, so, yeah, are some dracaenas really good for them, too? Cool. That would be sweet. Um, yeah, any kind of like thicker bodied plants, even bromeliads are pretty good, too. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Now, temperature wise, are they similar to Cresteds um, as far as keeping them temperature wise? And then talk a little bit about lighting if you what kind of lighting you guys use on those yeah so like i said these guys are mostly nocturnal um some people choose not to give them uv but i'm always going to recommend it even if they're sleeping and they're not directly out mm -hmm. under the light animals do what is called cryptic basking and yeah. that's where maybe a part of them will be sticking out from a branch soaking up them uv uh rays and such and it's really good for them um so I would say very minimal lighting. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't really need necessarily like a heat source unless your ambient temperature in your home is like cold. Yeah. So these guys require an ambient temperature of like mid 70s. Gotcha. Um, if you provide them with a basking area, they like it between 80 to 85 ish kind of. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's and that's another thing too that's important is make sure they have, you know, space to get away from the heat too. Yeah. Um, they thermoregulate. They, you know, these are cold blooded animals, so they can't regulate their own body temperature like you and I can. Yeah. So yep. I don't want to cook them. <laughs> and that's kind of cool. It's naturally set up in a taller enclosure yeah. where the lower that they can get, the cooler it can, tends to be, and the higher Absolutely. closer to the lights, it, it tends to be a bit warmer. That's yeah. really cool. Humidity wise, are they similar to crested geckos? Yeah. Um, anywhere between like 50 to 70% humidity. I achieve that by making sure the substrate stays pretty moist uh -huh. and I'm not talking like sopping wet or right. anything, you know? Um, and you know, again, live plants will really help retain yeah. the humidity as well. Uh, even leaf litter is really good at trapping it down in there too. I always put in like leaf litter. Um, you can either use like the bigger leaves, like magnolia yep. leaves or, <laughs> Sorry, it distracted me. It was licking me. Yeah. Um, or even the little like uh, oak leaves. Yeah. I like those a lot too. That's cool. Um, yeah. But these guys, I miss them usually once in the morning and once at night. Cool. So now you talked a little bit about insect eating and feeding insects once a mm -hmm. week. What are the types of bugs that uh, you're feeding the gargoyles, and what do you recommend other people uh, use as well too? So they can eat a variety, and variety is key for animals. Mm -hmm. um, their number one staple is usually crickets or roaches. Uh -huh. uh, but occasionally you can offer them wax worms as a treat. They're very fatty. So, yeah. again, like I said, as a treat. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can offer silkworms, hornworms, too. Um, I've seen people give them super worms as well. Yep. Yeah, there's there's lots they can eat. Yeah. Um, Grasshoppers too, actually. <laughs> and you said once a week. So like mm -hmm. how many are you feeding when you're doing that? And is that like a one-time feeding? Or are you allowing them to, to eat those later on throughout the week? Like how do you think about feeding insects? So when it comes to feeding insects, the thing we have to remember is their stomachs is a lot smaller than, you know, yours or eyes. So um, honestly, anywhere between like maybe six to eight crickets per animal. Yep. At least one this size, babies, I would be maybe do like two to four, gotcha. maybe four to six, depending on their size. Um, juveniles, kind of around the same, too. Yep. Yeah. That's you don't want to put in too many crickets. Yep. Um, they can actually munch on your animals, yeah. which is not fun. <laughs> yep. yep. And uh, they get loud as they uh, yes. grow in the enclosure and get their wings and then yes. they become loud. And yeah. they hide really well, too, sometimes. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, and then you said rapashi once a week. Mm -hmm. How long is that usually good for inside a terrarium? I'd say like a day or two. Gotcha. You wouldn't really want to leave it in there for much longer. 
Um, it can get really gross quick, get yep. mold. And, you know, if you have fruit flies, it'll attract them too to the cops. And then you'll be like, oh, my God, I have flies <laughs> in my enclosure. And then it's they're a pain in the butt to get rid of. Yep. So, yeah. Talk a little bit about breeding. How do you how do we set them up to breed? And then what's the process? Are they similar to crusty geckos where they're burying the eggs? Talk a little bit about breeding. Sure. So for all of our enclosures here, um, we have them in 18, 18, 24s, I believe. Um, I only do one, one pairs, which is one male, one female. Mm -hmm. Um, and I only keep them together for a little while just so that way the female doesn't get super stressed out from being like overbred by the male. Um, oh, <laughs> hi buddy. And pretty much like temperatures and humidity and everything remains the same. Um, kind of like uh, crested geckos. There's not a lot of extra encouragement needed. That's nice. Um, I mean, I would always recommend, you know, giving your animals a break in between yep. breeding sessions. It helps keep them healthy and, you know, reduces risk of injury or shortening of lifespan. Yep. So. And th yeah. they're laying two eggs at a time? Yes. And are they burying them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And then how many clutches in a normal year is a, is a female usually laying? Gosh. I want to say maybe six to eight. Okay. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now talk a little bit about the morphs and like breeding and, and mm -hmm. like how, how uh, reliable is it to breed and get certain colors? Talk a little bit yeah. about that. So um, they're a little bit different than crested. So crested are more polymorphic, as I've mentioned before. And mm -hmm. that just means that, you know, their genetics are kind of like a wild grab bag. Yep. You have a vague idea of what you're going to get, but sometimes <laughs> you get surprised. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, these guys, I say, are honestly kind of pretty straightforward you breed red gargs with red gargs you'll get more red gargs you breed stripes with stripes you'll get more stripes um sometimes i like to experiment and i'll do like a stripe with just like a different color one and see if i could get like a yellow stripe versus a red stripe um they're interesting and like i said they do have some morphs but they're not as crazy or elaborate as crested geckos are. Yep. I've never seen like an albino yeah. like gargoyle. I've seen some melanistic or the closest to that is like, they're just really, 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 really dark. Huh. Um, but yeah, they've got quite a few different patterns. So like I said, this guy's kind of like a red base blotch. He's also got a stripe down his back and this really cool, almost black chain linking. Yep. So I'm gonna put you back for a second, buddy. I know. I'm sorry. He's, <laughs> He's like, like no. no. Why would you do this to me? Watch your tail. I don't want to close your. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to go back in. No. He wants I to stay out. I just don't want to close his tail or his toes in. But this little guy here. Oh, he got real dark. This one is about five months old. Oh wow. And you can see, he's yeah. got a brilliant dark. red thick stripe down his back yeah that's very dark and he's even got a little bit of orange modeling on his sides oh, oh, boy. <laughs> oh i hear him he's not right. happy yeah <laughs> you tell them buddy <laughs> so i'm talking about when they're a little grumpy they, yeah they definitely like they let you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah they're cool. Uh, that's so. totally a gargoyle sound too. It I like is it. Rah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I imagine a gargoyle on a top of a building would sound like. It would just be grumpy. Oh, he's getting a little spicy right now. Oh. <laughs> he's like, I'll take you. I'll take you down. Uh-huh. Look at him. He's doing a little gargoyle perch. It's so cool. But yeah, um, like I said, he's got this brilliant, awesome dark red stripe down his back, and he's even got orange blotches like kind of modeled all over him. So I would say this one's like a red stripe blotch. Probably. You can even tell, like, as you're holding it, they're just so much more comfortable climbing than a oh, crest yeah. type. Like, like, it just looks so natural for, for them to climb like Definitely. that. That's really cool. And that really ties back into how you keep them. Like, you wanted mm -hmm. to keep them much more arboreal. That's for really sure. cool. That's really cool. And this little guy, too, he's available. He yeah. is up on our website. <laughs> he is an individually listed. Awesome. Awesome. So he's looking for his forever home. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, put you on the spot. Sure. Why do you think gargoyles aren't as common in the hobbyist Cresteds? And do you think that's a popularity thing? Is that just an availability thing? Like, why why don't we see more gargoyles like we do Crested Geckos? I think it's a combination of things of one kind of like you mentioned, um, availability. Uh, they do tend to be more pricey as mm. well. Um, a lot of gargoyles, like I've never seen anyone really sell them like under like 200 bucks. Okay. Like, they're usually pretty up there in yeah. price. Um, they can be a little fussy with breeding. Like yeah. I said, they are a little territorial with each other. So you just have to be very um, mindful yeah. and, you know, cautious with them. Um, a lot more than you would with like crested geckos. Yep. So yep. I think, like I said, it's a combination of things. Cool. They also, I believe, have a reputation for being less handleable than crested, more flighty. Is that is that yeah. pretty true? Yeah. They can be, but if you handle them often and like just kind of respect their space, you can see that they chill out. Like this little guy here, he was a yep. little startled when I got him out of the cup. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's you're making me look like a liar (laughs) (laughs) Uh, any tips or tricks that you would give to people that are keeping gargoyles things to keep in mind that that they want they might want to remember to be really successful with them um in the future yeah um honestly um dehydration is Mm. pretty big with them too so Make sure you keep them well hydrated. They, um, their skin can get a little sunken in, especially around their eyes or their head. Um, and their tail actually can get kind of wavy and crinkly. Oh, interesting. If they have, like, there's usually, like, one of two things, or it could be a combination. Yeah. It's either calcium deficiency, so make sure that you're yep. definitely supplementing uh, your insects with either calcium repashi plus or any other kind of calcium supplements yeah. that you, you know, prefer yeah. to use and hydration these guys definitely need it <laughs> that's cool that's cool yeah all right thanks for educating us on uh gargs i'd like to do a lightning round with you if you wouldn't mind sure. um i know you've answered some of these questions in the past so feel free to change the answer if you'd like or you can keep the same answer um we'll see if people remember what your answers were in the past so all right if money and space were no issue what's your dream pet that you would keep you know, it's funny. I actually have my dream pet now. I have a breeding pair of Europlatus fantasticus at home. Oh, cool. Which is known as the satanic leaftail gecko. That's I promise cool. they're not evil little guys. <laughs> they're, they're just called that because they got these little horns on their head. But they're so cute. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Cool. I finally got it. <laughs> so, and you're done. There is no next pet. That's the that's the one for, for the rest of your life? I wouldn't say that. Okay. All right. All right. So, next episode, I'm sure you'll have, a, you'll have another one. Maybe. All right. Besides Josh's Frogs, what's another business that's either producing really cool animals or a business that's producing some really cool products that you'd like to give a shout out to? Actually, I would really like to shout out Reptophiles because oh, cool. they have the best care guides and sheets for a vast uh, amount of species yeah. of herps and yeah. such. And I find myself always looking back mm-hmm. and referencing um, Mariah's stuff. Yeah. She's a really cool person. So if you haven't heard of Reptophiles, absolutely check them out. Yeah, yeah. She produces quite a bit of content, but uh, really high quality content as well, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Favorite animal or plant in the entire world? What's the coolest creature or coolest living thing on our planet? Man, I I love crocodilians. I I feel like I say this every time, but... I love the American alligators. I love their fat little jowls. They're so cute. Yes. Oh, they're just swamp puppies. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Uh, if you have an hour of free time, what are you doing with your uh, free time nowadays? Well, currently that's building 
enclosures and such at home and cool. whatnot. So cool. I love doing that. <laughs> Are you doing any cool art stuff right yeah, now? Yeah, I still do that. I cool. still do like uh, herp stickers and such cool. and um, trying to be able to do prints and such. Oh, sweet. So it'll be cool. Hopefully sweet. I'll have an Etsy up soon. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We'll drop cool. a link as soon as it's live. Yeah, that'd All be right. great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, last question. you got a bunch of people listening to you. What's one piece of advice either about the reptile hobby or one piece of advice about life in general? What's the, the one line that you'd like to give us? You know, I was really inspired by that one Allstate company meeting we had mm. or whatever. Just never give up. Yeah. Just keep doing what you love. Mm -hmm. Sometimes failure is just part of your path. Yeah. But if you learn from that and take notes from it, like yep. you, you will go far. Yeah. That's so. cool. That's cool. Thank you for sharing that with us, mm -hmm. Lori. For sure. Awesome. Please check out some of uh, Lori's other videos, either on YouTube or on Facebook. Check those out. Um, mm -hmm. Lori does a lot of content for us. Very smart, mm -hmm. knows her stuff, and really cares deeply about these animals and is doing some really cool stuff um, in that mm -hmm. room. So check out her stuff and check out her babies as well, too. Yep. Thanks a lot, Lori. You're welcome. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. If you enjoy this content and want to stay up to date, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow us across social media. We always want to bring you the best content, so let us know if you, what you think in the comments. And for all your reptile and amphibian needs, be sure to check us out at joshesfrogs.com. We have an amazing selection. Until next time, stay curious, stay froggy, and keep exploring. <laughs>